This lecture continues with the review of the solo growth model. Here, I just want to add to this that we were discussing how to find the uh, consumption and investment. So remember, this line, S times that is our total savings in the economy, which is equal to our total investment in the economy. So the distance from here to here is our total investment in this economy. Well, um, we've got this piece. If I knew this piece, the difference between the two would be consumption. I know y looks just like this because this is just a fraction of the y curve. So if I take my, cons my capital stock in steady state here and trace it all the way up to here, I can find the amount of consumption in our economy. So this is investment, this is consumption, and those two together is total GDP. Why do we care? Well, to start, we want to trace out where consumption is, and we want to be able to find and identify everything we need in our model. But secondly, we need to know how to identify the maximum consumption steady state in order to answer a few questions that we're going to look at later. So our next question is how to find the max consumption steady state. And I'll start by pointing out that the distance between this line and y is consumption. This line cutting this investment line cutting the break even line just tells us where investment happens and where they're there it basically is determined by our savings rate. So, really, I need to just find where this distance is greatest. Clearly, this distance here is bigger than it is here, right? So, consumption here is bigger than it is here. And it looks like it's bigger than it is there. So, somewhere in the middle, consumption is the highest. Graphically, it should be obvious that that will occur wherever this line is tangent to this. So in this graph, if I shifted this line over there, it looks like it would probably happen somewhere right around there. It would give me my maximum consumption. So let me show you how we do that. We start by just drawing our depreciation line, sometimes called our break-even line, and the production function. Here, I can look for where this is parallel, and if I'm good graphically, there's some, it's somewhere like this, where I've just shifted this up, and those two would just be tangent right there. That point gives me the maximum distance between this and this. That is going to be our consumption. And the remainder is going to be our investment level. So now I draw the other curve. I'll put it as another color. So I've really chosen this savings rate in order to get me to this point here. So first I maximized it here, and then I chose the savings rate that gets me there. If I look at that level of capital stock, steady state, we're all looking at steady state only. Notice is the max consumption in steady state. I could have steady state consumption 
is going to look like that around there. So this level of savings rate and this level of capital and this level of consumption is the maximum consumption and it is called the golden rule savings rate, which is really the key. And that determines my golden rule capital and my golden rule consumption. I like to call it max consumption, steady state. These are all steady state concepts because the golden rule implies some sort of a welfare choice or uh, uh, an evaluation or a norm normative comment. And we don't really think of it being better than any of the other steady states. It's just the one that happens to maximize consumption.